Welcome to The Compressor Guru. In today's episode, the guru will walk you through the removal and reinstallation of the bearings on the crank of the Ingersoll Rand 242 and reinstall the crank into the crankcase. And now, here's The Compressor Guru. Welcome back to The Compressor Guru. We're flying right through this 242 rebuild uh, today. Well, <laughs> today in this hour, because we're doing this all in series and we're working over the weekend because this machine's promised out. But at this time, we're going to take and knock the bearings off of the shaft. I already have the bearing splitter on and there's a spacer here and this bearing that we're going to try to pull in one go here. And then we're going to have... We'll have to get the uh, uh, other bearing off, and last time on a 2545, we had to cut it off with the torch. We're hoping we don't have to do that, but I am not hopeful. So, anyway, here we go. And underneath it, you have padded it. I don't have, I don't have a helper here to catch the shaft, so... I'll try to catch it, but if it doesn't, I shouldn't ding the bearing surface. Uh, that's a big, that thick blanket, doubled over several times. Okay. Well, that's not good. We busted the bearing housing. The outer race of that roller bearing busted. Yep. So, we're going to let some pressure off. And we're going to retighten the bearing splitter onto the shaft a little tighter. Keep pushing. That was a little scary. Yep, that's why you wear glasses, safety glasses, when you do this. And And I caught it. Got it. Thank you, babe. Okay, we need that spacer. I don't think we can reuse this. <laughs> Were we planning on it? No. <laughs> so, okay. And here's our here's the issue. This machine was making terrible noise, and you can see that roller bearing is wiped out. And I'm not even going to try to get a bearing splitter or puller on that. I know I can't do it. We're going to mount it in the vise and cut that bearing off. Nice cherry red there.
fun. Mm-hmm. Well, that was certainly easier than last time we did one of these. Yes, it was. It's nice to be uneventful, isn't it? <laughs> Step on that, you'll have a hot foot. <laughs> okay, quickly, easily cut the bearings off while well, one bearing off is going in the parts washer. Uh, I'm going to do a little sand and clean up uh, the rough parts of the uh, shaft, especially where the flywheel will go back on, and we'll be back to finish this up. Okay, now that we have uh, Got the bearings off the crankshaft. I've cleaned the crankshaft and uh, I cleaned up our spacer. We're going to reassemble. Note these two bearings. There's water laying here. I'm glad this is in a package. <laughs> I had a bottle of water there so we didn't burn the shop down. Uh, note these two bearings are different sizes. This is the bearing that goes down here. This bearing has the snap ring on it, which we saved the snap ring when we tore down, but this bearing goes up here. So we're going to press these bearings on. Won't take but a minute. Things are going fairly well, and I shouldn't say that because I said that a couple days ago and it ended. This bearing goes either way. And Spacer came off right there, and our next bearing goes on. See the snap ring? The snap ring goes towards the end of the shaft. You put it on this way, that snap ring will be in the wrong place for uh, when we go back together. So. The snap ring goes towards the end of the shaft, and shouldn't have to. And we don't want to get this so tight that the spacer is pinched. We just want that spacer to. Take note that <laughs> this being a smaller crankshaft, smaller bearings, it's much easier to manipulate and push than the 2545 was. 
our time was magnified because of the size of that particular pump. are installed. It is that simple. Folks. We're going to move the power frame or the crankcase over now and we are going to install the crankshaft into the crankcase. Before we do that we have to take that snap ring off. Attempt number two, <laughs> we got a little crooked the first time, had to pop it back out, and it takes a lot of care to get this just straight enough to push it in well. If it binds up, you don't want to bust your crankcase because it's only cast iron. I think that looks pretty good. I think we can get a good push there. Doing well, Val. get down there and shoot up and watch the bearing come through till the 
snap ring becomes, or the snap ring slot becomes visible. The snap ring becomes visible. The slot where the snap ring goes becomes visible. Hmm. Okay. Not sure I know. Like, do both bearings have to come down through? No, just the front of the outside bearing. See the bearing? I see the bearing. Should be it. Okay. Yeah. So the bearings now pushed into the crankcase or power frame. Sounds a whole lot better. <laughs> oh. And it's just far enough out to get the snap ring. <sighs> See where the snap ring goes? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the crankshaft's back in the power frame, and it sounds so much better, and there's no play in that crankshaft. Naturally, we got those bad bearings out. We're going to let this set here, and we're going to move on to rings and cylinders in our next episode. And this is the Compressor Guru. Thank you for watching, like, subscribe, hit that notify bell and leave comments and questions about this assembly or others and I'll, get, I'll answer any uh, questions you have. Uh, we'll be back and continue this assembly on our next episode. Thank you for watching this episode of The Compressor Guru. Please hit like and subscribe and use the notify bell so you will know when the next new episode is released from The Compressor Guru. God bless you and have a great day.